في أكبر Well, good morning. My name is Willie Lawson. Uh, this is the Morning Report. The Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. We are thrilled to see you here this morning. Uh, on yesterday, um, yesterday morning, actually, uh, President Trump officially announced his uh, running mate, J.D. Vance, uh, praising the Ohio Republicans' background, a true American the GOP presidential nominee highlighted how Vance has been a champion for the middle America and will continue to fight for American workers and farmers in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, Minnesota, and far beyond. Yes, one of the things that, that they started doing when they started picking vice president was they were hoping to, to open up uh, other areas of the country, that area that, that vice president usual candidate was in, uh, thinking that it would bring the to ticket votes. I think that might have used to have worked, but I don't think that works as well anymore. Boy, there's such a national slash international news pattern over, over the world. I don't think, you know, picking a person from a particular area of the country as a strategy works as well. But that's why they, that's one of the reasons why they did it. Um, now, commenting on Trump's pick during a Heritage Foundation Policy Fest on Monday, our friend Tucker Carlson said some things that I thought were interesting and to pay attention uh, to, to pay attention to. Um, and that maybe, maybe we should be a lot happier with the president's pick of this guy here. Um, took a cross and said this, every bad person I ever met in a lifetime in Washington was aligned against J.D. Vance. Every single warmonger was lined, lined up over the, the last week to knife J.D. Vance, not only on personal grounds, because he's a perfectly nice guy. Uh, he's one of the, the only members of the Senate with a happy marriage. Uh, but because he thought that it would be harder to manipulate and slightly less enthusiastic about killing people. That's it. Um, that he would be an impediment to their exercising power. And boy, they went after him like I've never seen. Carlson continued. I, I just want, just I'm reminded, I just, I was, excuse me, I was just reminded that this process is so ugly that the normal people do not want to participate in it. And yet normal people have to suck it up and do so anyway, because the consequences are too profound and it's so serious. And the second thing I was reminded of, it is uh, not ultimately political, Carlson added. It's much deeper. And I think what happens, uh, thinking about what happened Saturday, reminded of a lot of people, this is a spiritual battle underway. Now, I did a whole program on this. This is a spiritual battle. There's no logical way to understand what we are seeing in our in temporal terms. Um, on on X, Carlson specifically called out Senator Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham is a lot, and this is what Tucker Carlson tweeted about uh, Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham is a liar. No one lobbied harder against JD Vance than he did. And in the sleaziest, most vicious way, he was doing it in the morning, uh, this morning. Uh, this is why everyone hates Washington, because people like Lindsey Graham are happy to lie right to your face, uh, smiling as they plot your demise. That's the truth. It's disgusting. And there's a picture here where Lindsey Graham and J.D. Vance are on the back of a car and they both get their thumbs up and he's smiling. <sighs> Why? Because Lindsey Graham depends on the, uh, the, the, the military industrial complex to keep his pockets full, to keep his campaign coffers full. And what we know about J.D. Vance is that he doesn't, he's not a fan of these endless wars and, and, the, US is, and the U.S. involvement in such. You know, the Ukrainian president was like, oh, you know, picking this guy as vice president is it's not good for Ukraine. Well, well, they think it's not good because maybe the, the money will, will slow down or stop because of J.D. Vance's influence. Now, I'm going to take you all back to eighth grade for a minute. Write down in the comments what you think the power of the vice president of the United States is. I'll, I'll give you a second what power they have, or, or and, and if you're really smart, 
Tell me what their duties are. Go ahead. Write them in the comments. I'll give you a minute. Lovely day today. I think I'll be, um, and I, I don't hate me for it. I think I'll be taking a little nap before I go off to work today. I think I'm, I'm getting a little, I was up early. Got my hair cut. Got my beard quaffed a little bit. Looks good. Thank you, Mr. Tillman. No. Okay, here we go. The, the vice president serves as president of the Senate and only gets to vote if there's a tie. Yes. If there's a tie. There are 100 people in the Senate. If, if the score is 50-50, they are the tiebreaker. That's probably their most effective thing. Otherwise, they have no powers, no, no powers of, of legislation. And they basically serve at the president at, at the pleasure of the president. That's it. They don't write legislation. They they don't do any of that. They serve at the pleasure of the president. And they take over if, if the president isn't able to, for one reason or, or, or the other. So sometimes people would pick a vice president because they were, they were worse than the president. Or pick a vice president to, to politically mothball them. So, in, in, the day, in, in, in our days where optics are, are so important, a lot of a lot of us, including myself, probably would have said, "Hey, you know what? Who, who made a great choice optically? Byron Donald. That's right. I know you, you you took the words right out of my mouth. I took the words right out of your mouth, right, Byron Donald. But Byron Donald's going to be a lot more effective in you know in Congress than he is you know in the office of the uh, in the office of the vice president or I can't remember his name, Mark." Not Mark Hamilton. Uh, I'll I'll think of it a little bit. You guys know what I'm talking about. The uh, the lieutenant governor from North Carolina. For optics would have been fantastic. But JD Vance is 39. He's young. The pick didn't really matter other, other than that. It was great because JD Vance was not a fan of the president. You know, in the beginning. But he saw, like a lot of people saw the policies working and just went with it, just like Glenn Beck, uh, Mark Larson, me. In any case, we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody. And for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Bye bye now. Fiat Maria.